once you start degrading an environment, uh, it isn't only the animals who suffer, it's the people too. And we, that's the Jane Goodall Institute, realized very clearly that only if you involve the local people and improve their lifestyle can you hope to conserve uh, any area at all. And I'd realized this when I flew over Gombe National Park 16 years ago. The park is only 30 square miles. And when I looked down from this plane, right the way along Lake Tanganyika, where it used to be virtually unbroken forest, inland from the lake, uh, the trees had gone. Only within the park was this little gem of forest. I realised, you know, how can we even try and protect these famous chimpanzees if the people outside the park are struggling to survive? Mm. So we created our Take Care programme, that's T-A-C-A-R-E. This has improved the lives of the people in a very holistic way. Everything from tree nurseries, uh, farming methods most suitable to degraded land, uh, working with groups of women, introducing microcredit opportunities, um, scholarships for girls to stay through secondary school, family planning, HIV AIDS education, the whole gamut, including better hygiene, medicine and so forth. But not as a bunch of white people going in and saying, you know, hey guys, you're suffering, this is what we're going to do. No, a team of Tanzanians going into the villages, talking to the elders, asking them, what do you want? What's your priority? Was it conservation? No. It was schools and education mm. and health. Uh, but as their standard of living improved and as they became more aware of the interconnection of environmental concerns and, and human well-being and sustainability, so now these very people who were quite resentful of foreigners coming in and as they saw it, you know, they're struggling to, to live. Foreigners are coming and spending all this money on, on animals. You can see that they were resentful. Mm -hmm. But now there are partners. Now they are helping to conserve the water tables. They're, they're actually allowing between 10 and 20% of their denuded land to regenerate. And so we're creating leafy corridors, which is the only hope for the Gombe chimps to survive. There's less than 100 of them. And now they have the opportunity, or will have, to move out to other remnant groups outside. The survival of the fittest, the phrase coined by the biologist and the economist Herbert Spencer, is often incorrectly attributed to the English naturalist Charles Darwin. In his Principles of Biology, published in 1864, in which he drew parallels with the theories of evolution and natural selection outlined five years earlier by Darwin, in On the Origin of Species, Spencer wrote that, this survival of the fittest, which I have here sought to express in mechanical terms, is that which Mr. Darwin has called natural selection, or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. And now, a century and a half after Darwin postulated his theory of evolution through natural selection, it could be argued that the conservationists, anthropologists, and primatologists, in their quest to save the mountain gorillas and chimpanzees, are unwittingly attempting to stall the evolutionary course of the survival of the fittest. Whether we like it or not, Humans have evolved as the superior primate species. However, in the case of the Batwa pygmies of Central Africa, when the habitat of the mountain gorillas is considered more important than the habitat and culture of the humans, the evolutionary cycle is disrupted. The question is, where do we draw the line? In order for the human species to continue evolving, natural selection must not be hindered. So we must ask ourselves, what level of interference with the process of primate evolution can abnormally affect the process in its entirety. Whereas Spencer's survival of the fittest would apply to the Batwa's inherent ability to protect their natural habitat, it is the Batwa's fellow humans that ultimately led to their demise by removing them in order to protect the great apes. As we ask ourselves, what lies ahead for humans and their fellow primates in Africa, only time will tell. Although there would be little argument from anyone that the mountain gorillas are a natural treasure that need protection in the name of wildlife conservation, what cultural cost must the Batwa people be expected to pay? You see, this is the Gura de Montagne. Huh? The Gura de Montagne is what tell you the three country. In other country, no having the gorillas. Many people coming here to see the gorillas. For me, why well, like it the gorillas? The gorillas bring the money. And this is a control wonder, huh? 
and the same the Uganda, may he has is very important in this country. Oh. Can I you see, the gorillas, they have many wives. You see, so you have ten wives huh? for one day. Huh? One, 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 or else ten for one day. Huh? And sometimes one wife is make after ten minutes, is come to talk to him again, and again, again, again. <laughs> now, now, jiggy, jiggy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> jiggy, six. Good for him. Now you see? Yeah. You see? The you first, understand. same the same people. people. Yeah. The people, so you are very far. Uh, the people stalk this toy for the gorillas. Maybe you see, uh, is it true? No, it's not true. Is it correct? <coughs> and uh, the finger, same. <coughs> the eye, same. The different, uh, the, the, the hand, huh? come very long for the gorillas. <laughs> So much. <laughs> All the biological ones, similarity mm -hmm. of the brain, the central nervous system, the immune system, uh, structure of the blood, DNA, difference between us and chimps, about 1.6%. And in addition, you have all your behavioral similarities. They can live to be more than 60 years. Uh, strong bonds between family members lasting throughout life. The non-verbal communication, kissing, embracing, holding hands, patting on the back, swaggering, shaking the fist, uh, cooperation, intellectual performance as we used to think, unique to ourselves, using and making tools. We could go on. While the populations of protected primates in Central Africa are slowly increasing, the poverty and disease which affect many Africans are threatening the cultural extinction of the Batwa pygmies. We must ask ourselves, which is more important, the gorillas in the mist of the rainforests, or the humans in the dust along the logging roads. Should we not afford the Batwa the same right to conserve their cultural heritage as we extend to the primates of Central Africa? In my view, make us unique, not only different from chimpanzees, but all the other amazing animals with whom we share the planet. And because of the chimps, we realize we're part of the animal kingdom. We're not separated from it. But the one thing we seem to have, which the others don't, is this sophisticated spoken language that enables us to teach children about things and events that aren't present, to learn lessons, or we should be able to, from the distant past, to plan for the far future, and above all to discuss, so that a simple idea can, the different people involved in the discussion can contribute their own particular uh, skill and wisdom. And a simple idea can end up as something very magical.